you call me combing my hair. <laughs> well, you've got to look nice for a video, haven't you? Anyway, welcome. Greetings and welcome again. Um, right, today I'm going to make a an Italian whip float. Now, uh, I just had a couple of orders through for uh, these nice little floats. Um, you can buy these in the shop. I know that many years ago, um, uh, I think it was uh, Italian companies were making them because they are Italian floats. The French also make them. Um, I haven't seen them freely available in the shops. I think the, you know a couple of the uh, uh, manufacturers are starting to produce them now and again. But um, the Italian whip float. Now, uh, we, it's a float that we we don't use that often but it does come into its own especially if you're looking to catch bleak gudgeon um, either on a canal or on a river either up in the water down in the water um, it's a lovely little float uh, in fact um, I I probably got about a dozen different sizes ranging from uh, oh uh, 25 gram uh, 50 gram 75 gram 1 gram one and a half gram all the way up all the different sizes and they come in useful for different conditions and for different type of fish um, I first discovered this uh, float when I was in Italy fishing on the um, on one of the rivers not the Arno but it was a river very close to there um, it, in Florence and um, we were practicing and we happened to stumble uh, across the, uh, the Italian team now the Italian team in those days, uh, back in the 70s, um, were, were one of the best teams in the world when it came to bleak fishing. They were, they, they were so fast and they, they had methods and techniques uh, far advanced than any, any other team. I mean the, the closest ones you could probably catch them was the French, uh, Robert Tess for example, he was quite good at it. Um, but the, the probably the best angler ever uh, in the history was uh, probably um, Bassi. Now Bassi has won the, the World Championships three times using this type of float for, for bleak fishing. Of course in them days um, used to count points for the fish as well so obviously the more fish you got the more points and you'd end up um, you know obviously uh, having high marks and possibly winning uh, the competitions but even so it's a fantastic uh, float um, I'll show you how to make it uh, I'll show you what goes into it and I'll also show you the shotting patterns and how to fish it so uh, no further ado let's crack on okay right the first thing is dowel first of all we need some dowel some balsa dowel uh, I buy it in this long lens now um, again going back to uh, a previous uh, vlog about uh, making floats um, it's through the years I get the experience that I can look at a, a piece of dowel now and, and more or less tell you what that will take as far as the weight and uh, capacity is concerned so um, I think this customer's ordered uh, let me see um, oh yeah he's ordered a 0 0.25 half a gram and 075 which is three quarters of a gram so that's three um, sizes so I know for a fact that let me get my pen I know that a half a gram is going to be about one and a half inches I know for a fact that a three quarter gram is going to be about one and three quarter inches and a half a gram is only going to be probably about inch and a quarter. So there are. I've marked out my three size, uh, three sizes of floats. And what I'll do, I'll cut them. And the easiest way to cut uh, thin um, balsa, thin dowel, is with a Stanley blade. So what I'm going to use. I'm just going to uh, just cut this dowel by simply scoring the dowel. As I turn the as I turn the dowel around the balsa, the blade is cutting into it slowly. Um, now, once I've got more or less halfway through, I, I shall just snap it off. And again, I'll I'll be sanding that down to make a nice finish. So that's my. Uh, this will be my three quarter one now. So. Um, yeah, that's 
that's about, that's about it there. Okay, probably miscalculated that slightly because I, as I look at it again now, I, I know more or less the size. Yeah. Okay, next one. And then now for the half a gram one, which should be about, uh, about there. Yeah. Oh, see, I'll be testing these in the water anyway to make sure they are what they say they're going to be on the side of the road. There you go. As simple as that. Okay. There's the three sizes. There's a fine sanding block now just to sand the top off on both ends of the float. Uh, there you are. Making a nice flat end on either side of the dowel. Yeah, just concentrating a little bit on this before I, I start bantering away, talking. Um, yes, I've been using these floats quite a lot on the River Y recently. Um, getting some good weights uh, last year and this year. I've had uh, you know, a couple of um, high figure doubles, 19 pound, 20 pound, you know. Um, you know, I've won a few bob fishing for bleak using these floats. Proof is in the pudding, as they say. Okay, right, I'm going to start off with the three quarter gram float. Uh, now, what I'm going to do, uh, what I need. Uh, for this float is first of all the bristle then I'll need a little wire stem base that will go on to the bottom now unlike the larger float where you can determine the center of the dowel this case in this scenario what we need to do I'm just going to um, get a better finish on this if I can on both sides with a bit of sandpaper yeah. Now, in this case, in this scenario, what we do, or what I do, I should say, I don't know what anybody else does, <laughs> I use a small pin, okay, a baiting needle pin, you could say anything, any, anything like that, and I have to locate the centre uh, by sight. Now, what I normally do, I either put a little marker in the middle with a little marker pen, so it gives me an idea, and using my fingers a rest. I'll actually try and put a little hole in what I consider to be the middle of the float. And I think it's about right if you look. See? Okay. Uh, on both sides. Yeah. Now, look, drop C again. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the needle and I'm going to make a hole in the balsa. Um, keeping a steady hand and eye, turning it, making sure it is in the center. And I'm going to indentate a small hole in the middle. Okay, now I've centralized the two holes and I've punctured them with the needle. I'm ready now to put the wire stem base. So by slowly pushing into the indentation, into the float, I've now set the wire stem. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a drop of super glue on the end. As I get the super glue everywhere. <laughs> Well, quite often end up with the sticky fingers using the super glue. I now put this into the center. Okay, and I'll push that in. Hold, count to three, and that should be set. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to nip that off now with a pair of nips, tin cutters, probably about a quarter of an inch. There you are. Okay, so there you go. Now I've got my base. Um, uh, yep, yeah, that's okay. Well, what I'll be doing now, I um, 
I'm not going to use the lathe on these small floats. I'm just going to hand sand these down by hand uh, and I'm going to taper them from the base up to the top of the float. Um, and I'm going to do that uh, firstly before I put the bristle and the bristle which is a small nylon bristle which will be going near the top but what I will do just for this just to begin with I will just make sure that it all fits and it all looks perfect first yeah that's okay that's looking okay right so I'll put that to one side now and my next stage with the help of a strip of medium coarse sandpaper and then wrap it round at the base and I start to turn the float. Now what I do, I start off from the base and I gradually work my way up the float. Okay, so I create like a taper. So it tapers down to a very fine point at the base of the dowel to create the aerodynamics of the float. Okay, so it's it's all about taking the time and uh, gradually working it away. I mean, I have done them on the lathe and you can do, certainly do them a lot quicker, but uh, unfortunately with this thin dowel, uh, sometimes you can quite easily um, break the dowel. So it's, as I say, it's much easier to do by hand. Now, I'm looking at that now, just, uh, I, I will be finishing this off with finer sandpaper, but at the moment with a medium, course I can actually get down to the the size I want much easier and once once I've achieved that then I will of course use the finer sandpaper. Yeah. Do I buy the crystal brooklet? No, I won't start that again. <laughs> Oh, you know what I hear me sing it all the time. Uh, yeah, so, as I say, um, fishing this particular float um, on various venues certainly works well. Um, it's, a, it's a simple float, really, when you think about it. It's a, I think um, they call it the pencil float, or be known as the pencil float. I call it the Italian whip float because obviously that's where it originated from um, and as I mentioned some of the great Italian anglers in the past have used these to great effect um, and I will show you or if not show you but I will explain how they're used and how by uh, shotting them in a certain way it's a float that you never have to bring or retrieve out of the water uh, without a fish on the end. And I'll explain how that works, um, obviously a little bit later in, the, in this video. Um, yeah, use these in conjunction with the whip, by the way. That's why we call them Italian whip floats. <laughs> there you are. Just get a nice little taper on that now. Right, I don't know if you can actually see that developing. Yeah. So it's starting to create like a, a point. So I'll just finish up with a bit of smooth paper. Probably one of the most easiest floats to make, in fact. You know, um, it's no big uh, deal in making these. Just going to be a bit gentle with them. Yeah. I think uh, these particular floats will be um, black ones. I think they're going to be. Um, I think the uh, the cousin wants them black. Um, quite often, green is quite popular, and so is white. And white, in fact, uh, I know it's been an argument with a lot of anglers over the years about uh, painting the, the, the top of their poles uh, white 
to blend with the with the uh, clear sky um, to camouflage you know the uh, the pole well my uh, thoughts on that is that um, I, I look at nature I look at nature and I look at uh, birds you know I look at fish uh, I look at animals and if you look at them closely those sort of fish that uh, They have to have some sort of camouflage against predators and basically if you look at those sort of fish and birds they have a I think there is a reason why they have an underbelly white um, on their body and I think it's to camouflage against <laughs> against the uh, the sky and against predators attacking them from underneath so to me it makes sense to actually um, paint of uh, your pole white in fact it's been a known fact for many years that uh, white floats uh, definitely camouflage against the sky and um, and I proved that a few times fishing and um, where the fish spook off you know spook away with a with a black colored float where with a white color float they don't they actually think it's food sometimes <laughs> don't know why um, there you are. so there you go that's the float almost finished. And all I need now is to put the bristle into the top. And again, I've managed to Let's have a look. Yeah. I'm just, um, I'm just going to try and flat that off a bit better if I can. So it's got a nice flat top to it. And there is, there's a reason why I want a flat top to it. It's because talking about white I'll be painting that white because it's easy to see in the water then see yeah okay so what I'm going to do now drop this super glue yeah. locate it in the center making sure it's centerized there you are. and that's the float finished that's quick Obviously, I need to dope it, prime it, um, paint it, put the, uh, the capacity on the side and then varnish it. Uh, of course, before that, there is one other thing. I need to put an eye on the top. Now, these eyes are very minuscule. Uh, if they're so small, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it on the camera, but I'll see if I can show it to you. It's almost like the size 32 hook very very small yeah let's see if you can see that can you see that oh. yeah little tiny little tiny thing anyway <laughs> that will be going into the top of the float again I'll be using my tweezers and I generally wear a stronger size spectacles for this so I can see what I'm doing <laughs> but now I've already started I might as well finish and now what I'm doing is bending the eye back on itself okay I don't know if you can see that spot the super glue And that's going to go I'm going to locate this right on the top on the shoulder I have to be careful because if you're not careful you pierce the whole boss and it goes right into the the other side of the float so just again You see that it's a little light on top, and that's it. Okay, the next stage I'll be doping it and letting it uh, settle and letting it dry for uh, an hour or so before I come back. Okay, I better drive you mad with my bloody hair.
<laughs> anyway, I'm um, going to call that uh, a day now on the, on this part of this video, whip floats. Um, uh, come back and see the next part, which will be following shortly. Thank you.